Horse Racing Nation presents ShapCap with Southern California correspondent Scott Shapiro. ShapCap is sponsored by Derby Wars, your site for daily horse racing tournaments, and ShapperToCapper.com, your site for daily handicapping info from across the United States. Hey, racing fans, welcome back to another edition of Horse Racing Nation presents ShapCap. We have an exciting weekend upcoming here in Southern California, and that is because of the highly anticipated return of champion Philly Songbird. The daughter of Medagliadoro is set to square off against nine rivals in the $100,000 Santa Isabel Saturday afternoon at Santa Anita Park. The Santa Isabel on paper appears to be nothing more than a paid workout for Songbird, so instead of looking for value where there likely isn't, let's take a look back instead. Songbird's two-year-old campaign was brilliant as we know, and we're expecting equally if not more brilliant things as a three-year-old. When I look back at my racing days thus far, there are only two careers I can think of that would have had equally impressive two-year-old campaigns in the three-year-old seasons that we expect from Songbird. The first of them is right at the beginning of my racing days in 1990 when I saw the undefeated two-year-old season of Meadowstar. The Leroy Jolly trainee was brilliant that year, and in her undefeated campaign included a romp in the grade one for Zed at Belmont and an equally impressive score at 1-5 to five in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies. As a three-year-old, she was just as good. She won her first two starts, and then Leroy Jolly set her up against the boys in the Wood Memorial at Aqueduct. She failed that day and was a well-beaten fourth, but rebounded and competed in one of the rivalries I'll never forget against MC Hammer own Light Light in the Triple Tierra Series in New York. Equally impressive was that career of Silver Bullet Day for Bob Baffert. Silver Bullet Day won her first three starts, was defeated in the Del Mar Deputant, but kept winning from there. In fact, she won 11 of her first 12 starts. The one that's most memorable to me was when she held off stablemate excellent meeting in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies as a two-year-old and captured that event as well as the two-year-old filly of the year at the annual Eclipse Awards. She was incredible as a three-year-old as well, winning the Kentucky Oaks and Black Eyed Susan amongst others before being beaten by the boys when she faded late and finished seventh in the Belmont Stakes. Both of those fillies had great two-year-old and three-year-old campaigns, and I'm hoping Songbird can do so as well. It's crazy to think back how fortunate I've been to see almost all of her starts. I remember using more than just her in the pick four sequence on, in her debut because I was afraid that the rail draw would hinder her chances. Little did I know that she would break like a shot, basically, and let Mike Smith command her all the way around the track to an easy victory. Then from there, Jerry Hollendorfer took her right to the Del Mar Deputant, where she would take on the other highly acclaimed filly on the backside at Del Mar, Pretty and Cool. Songbird went off the favorite that day, but Pretty and Cool took plenty of support as well, and it appeared we'd have a showdown when they turned for home. But then Songbird's class and speed kicked in and she pulled away from the Baffert trainee to show how brilliant she was. After that, she went to San Anita Park and was preparing for the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies when she took on Landover Sea and the Chandelier. Landover Sea put forth a career best effort that day and gave her a little bit of a shot, but Songbird, as usual, pulled away in the end. It was on to Keeneland, where Songbird put together probably her best performance to date when she wired out the best two-year-old fillies in the nation over the Keeneland surface in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Fillies en route to a two-year-old championship. From there, she came back after a freshening for her first three-year-old start in the Las Virginis, where she easily disposed of a rather subpar field, much like the one she faces on Saturday. Songbird has big things to come, hopefully, as she prepares for the Santa Anita Oaks and the Kentucky Oaks the first weekend of May. And then from there, the sky's the limit as she looks to enshrine herself as one of the greats of all time. I'm looking forward to seeing her more of Songbird, and hopefully she continues her domination on Saturday. Let's see it happen. Join us next week when we take a look at... The big, big cap day where we will take a look at the San Felipe, which promises to be one of the best three-year-old races thus far this year on the road to the Kentucky Derby. Thank you, and see you again next week.